Marjorie, we nearly had an accident then. Oh, I know, Mossop. Could have been a nasty accident too. It's lucky I didn't drop this lot. <coughs> Why? What's in it? Something breakable? Yes, Tiddler. It's the bottles for my spring water. And if I'd have dropped them, there'd have been broken glass all over the place. And we know how dangerous that is. That we do, Marjorie. That we do. And you wouldn't have had any bottles to put your water in either. Well, I would have done actually, Mossop. Mm -hmm. There are bottles and bottles in the lane. I've just had them all delivered. Where are you going to put them? In the greenhouse. Now that I've had the roof mended, I can use it for storage again. Well, let me help you bring them in, Marjorie. Um, no, thank you, Mossop. Um, they're very heavy. Much too heavy for you. I don't want you hurting yourself. She means she doesn't want you dropping them all over the place. You know how clumsy you are. Clumsy, Tiddler? Me? Clumsy? Why, I am the unclumsiest fella you're ever likely to meet. Is that not the case? Marjorie? Oh, oh! Careful, Mossa. Oh. You, they weigh a ton, those bottles. I don't know how I'm going to manage them all. Couldn't Mr. Grimley help you carry them? Oh, he's out, I'm afraid. Oh, but you've just reminded me, Tiddler. He said he'd leave his hand cart out for me if I needed it, and I think I am going to need it. Look, here it is. That's a pretty <laughs> rum-looking object. Mr. Grimley made this himself, out of old bits of wood and a couple of old wheels. Well, it doesn't look very good, but it could be perfect for carrying my bottles in. Well, let me help you, Marjorie. I may be no good at carrying bottles, but I can certainly pull them along on this. Uh, be careful, Mossop. Oh! Well caught, Marjorie. Tricky things, carts. Mm, well, I think I'll pull the cart. Come on, let's fill it up with bottles. Is there anything I can do to help? Ah, well, now you could find something to prop the greenhouse door open with so we could get the cart in. Oh, yes, mm. Tiddler. Why don't you find a riddle stone? Then after we've finished propping the door open, we can do your riddling test with it. Oh, good idea. Mm. We get it up there! Whoa, Midnight! <laughs> oh. Hello, Midler. Are you playing at riding a horse? Playing? I'm not playing. Whoa there, boy! Oh, yeah, I'm riding a horse. No, you're not. Well, I'm not at the moment, no. Because I just got off him. <laughs> Good boy. Would you like to give him a pat? But there's nothing there. Of course there is. Don't you pay any attention to her midnight. You just can't see him, that's all. He's um, an invisible horse. I see. Good boy, midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you call him that? Oh, because he's got the most beautiful black coat, so he has. <gasps> black as midnight. How do you know, if he's invisible? Oh, I knows what I knows, all right. <laughs> you see, I've always wanted a horse, as long as I can remember. But he always had to be a black one. And now I've got one! <laughs> I've got a horse, a magnificent, wonderful horse. He's black as night, a magnificent sight, as fast as the wind, of course. Oh, when I ride, I swell with pride and feel I'm ten foot tall. Of all the horses in the world, mine is the best of all. Look out, Tiddler! That was nearly midnight. <laughs> I've got a horse, and a very fine horse indeed. With a flowing mane and intelligent brain, he's truly a noble steed. He carries me so tirelessly at a gallop or a trot. Of all the horses in the world. Get he up there! Get he down there! Mine is the best of the lot. <laughs> it must be wonderful to have a horse. I wish I had one. Oh, you could borrow midnight if you like. Could I? Sure. I've got to go pick some blackberries for my mum. So I might as well leave him with you while I'm gone, eh? Whoa! Oh. <laughs> he seems to like you. I'll look after him. Don't you worry. Bye bye then, midnight. <laughs> Here you are, Midnight. A bucket of oats for you. Um, taste them. They're delicious. Ah, I get a horse. I want a horse. 
And what do you think you might be doing, Tiddler? Um, I'm brushing Middler's horse. Middler's horse? Yes. Are you feeling all right? Yes, of course I am. There isn't a horse here, Tiddler. There is no horse anywhere here. This entire garden is completely horseless, Tiddler. It's an invisible horse, Mossop. Oh, an invisible horse, is it? Playing tricks on me, are we? Horsing about when there's work to be done? I thought you were going to be finding a riddle store to prop open Marjorie's door for her. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> um, I'll go and look for one now. Forgot, eh? Invisible horses. <laughs> I don't know what the tiddlers of today are coming to. That I don't. <laughs> Marjorie, I've found one. I I'm ever so sorry. I forgot about propping the door open. Oh, that's all right, Tiddler. I managed all right. It's not like you to forget something. Are you busy doing something else? Pulling my leg, Marjorie. That's what she was busy doing. Pretending to mess about with an invisible horse. An invisible horse? <laughs> I told Midler I'd look after it for him. Ah, it's his invisible horse, is it? Mm. And um, does it have a name? Um, he calls it Midnight because it's got such a lovely black coat. How splendid. Oh, I wish I could see it. What a pity it's invisible. Uh, don't go encouraging her, Marjorie. She's bad enough as it is. Invisible horse, indeed. Diddler. I reckon it's high time to test you with another Aesop's foible. If you have to do a bit of thinking, it might knock that invisible horse nonsense out of your head. Well, how about if we had the foible in the house? I could do with a bit of a sit-down. Please yourself, Marjorie. Mm. Ah, you are getting on well with the Aesop's foibles, aren't you, Tiddler? Yes, I am, Marjorie. If I can work out the moral from today's story, I'll have got, um, let me see, six right. And when I've done 12, of course, I'll be a full riddler. So you're halfway there. Uh, she is if she gets this one right. Let's see what you make of it, Tiddler. Now listen carefully for the moral, Tiddler. Ease up, ease up. Tell us a story, do. Riddler letters, as everyone knows, have always been delivered by hedgehogs trundling down the lanes with the letters on their spikes. They're a familiar sight of posties. But what most people don't realise is that the postie has to do lots of work before he even starts his round, sorting out the letters into piles, making sure they've got stamps on, trying to read the addresses. Well, it's hard work, and most posties have someone to help them with it. One postie was particularly fortunate in that he had two people to help him. But what was not so lucky for him was that the two people in question were a couple of good-for-nothing, bone-idle, tricky little tiddlers. They hated work, those tiddlers did, and what they hated even more was getting up early in the morning. Every day when the cock crowed, the postie would rouse them from their beds and set them to work so that he could be off bright and early on his rounds. And how those tiddlers grumbled. We must do something about this, said one of them. I'm fed up to the back teeth of getting up at dawn when that stupid old cock crows. Me too, said the other. It's a pity we can't get rid of that there cock. Then we could have a decent lion. And they looked at each other, and a plan formed in their tricky little minds. That night, they crept from their beds, kidnapped the cock, and gave it to a passing fox, who was very glad to have it indeed. It was a terrible thing to do, but the tiddlers were very pleased with themselves, and they were even more pleased the next morning when the cock didn't crow and the posty and the tiddlers slept until close on lunchtime. But that was the last line those tricky little tiddlers ever had. You see, the posty was so afraid of being late delivering the letters that he started waking up earlier and earlier. And of course, as soon as he was up, he made sure the tiddlers got up as well. Before too long, the tiddlers were being dragged out of their beds in the middle of the night and they were sleeping less and working harder than they'd ever done before. Heavy-eyed and yawning as they set about their tasks, those tricky little tiddlers did feel sorry for themselves. But I must confess, they were the only ones who did. Now then, tiddler, what's the moral in that, eh? 
Hmm. Well, there are quite a few lessons to be learnt from that, aren't there? Like, um, don't be lazy and don't be playing tricks. Yes, you're getting there, Tiddler. The moral is something to do with the tricks. Oh, right. Uh, then it must be something like people who play tricks can often end up tricking themselves. That's near enough. And perhaps you should bear that in mind the next time you go pulling my leg about invisible horses. I will, Mustard. Hmm. Um, excuse me, Marjorie, uh, but I've just got to go and give Midnight a drink of water. He must be ever so thirsty. Ah. <laughs> well, did you ever hear such cheek? Oh, I don't think she was being cheeky, Mossop. All this business about an invisible horse, it's just make-believe. Do you think so? You don't think she was doing it to tease me? No, Mossop. Lots of children play Let's Pretend. Well, I used to myself. You, Marjorie? Yes. I slept in a bedroom on my own, and I used to get very lonely at night, so I made up this imaginary friend. I called her Bertha, and I used to talk to Bertha every night, and I didn't feel lonely anymore. I see. Uh, and I suppose having an imaginary friend is no different from having an imaginary horse. Well, I couldn't go for a good gallop on Bertha. But seriously, Mossop, I think Midler always wanted a horse, and he couldn't have one. So now he's pretending that he's got one, and Tiddler is joining in the game. Hmm. I hadn't thought of it like that. Well, perhaps I have been a bit hard on Tiddler. Hmm. Well, if she's joining in the game, perhaps I ought to as well. Hmm. There, boy. There's a good boy. That's it. Whoa, boy! <laughs> Drink at midnight. Mm. Oh, you're back, are you, young Midler? <laughs> I hope Tiddler's been looking after that there horse of yours properly. <laughs> Whoa, dear, oh, dearie me. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> he kicked me, he did. Ho, ho. Never stand behind a horse, even an invisible one, eh? Eh? <laughs> You're just making fun of us, Mussop, aren't you? What, me? No, 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 Tiddler. Just joining in the game. <laughs> it's no game. It's real. Now, come, 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 young Midler. A bit of make-believe is all well and good, but don't take it too far. <laughs> I'm not taking anything too far. I really have got an invisible horse. Eh? <laughs> all right, then, Midler. Prove it. Eh? Prove it. Get him to pull this cart. All right, then. That's easy. Come on, Midnight. Back up. <laughs> you can't help but admire him, can you? Keeping him up to the very last, the young rascal is. <laughs> right, then, in you go. That's it. Now I'll just harness him up. Yeah, you do that, Midler. <laughs> you can't pull the cart unless he's harnessed to it, can you? <laughs> Go on then, Midnight, pull the cart. <laughs> yes, giddy up, Midnight. <laughs> what an imagination, eh? <laughs> You're right, Mossop. A wonderful imagination he's got. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,